it all in here. All we got to do is believe it. His prophets, there's lots of them. We need to listen to them. They gave us this message that will finish the work. In John chapter 4, John chapter 4, let's begin in verse uh, 43. Y'all there? John 4 and 43. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. Then when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman, or leader, whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he had heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said, Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed, and the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then he inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him, so that the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This again, the second miracle that Jesus did when he come out of Judea into Galilee. Do you hear, in the very first part of when we read that, you hear it was two days, two days journey. you hear that? Jesus spoke it. And it is. This man believed. Believed. Where is that kind of faith today? Where is it? Is it here? I hope so. I hope so. That's an amazing faith. You're two days journey away. Jesus says, go. He lived. And he just goes. And it's he liveth. <laughs> Ephesians. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by what? The word, the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Is that what we want? I think that's what we want, isn't it? So what men to love their wives as their own bodies? He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. 
but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Is this a difficult thing? This shouldn't be a difficult thing, right? God is using the marriage imagery to show the church and his relationship he wants with it. So what is God asking from us? That we revere him, right? How do we revere him? Believing his word. It's simple. Believing his word. I'm not so sure we believe it like we say we do. I'm not so sure I believe it like I think I do. Let's turn to Romans. Romans chapter 3. Beginning in verse 21. Romans 3. Y'all still awake? <laughs> but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by what? Faith. By faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. God doesn't make any difference, does he? We're all one, aren't we? So there should be no... We're, we're on even ground, right? All before God. We just need to believe Him, and He will show us the work that we need to do. Romans 4, um, let's go to Romans 4. I'm going to close with Romans 4, 1 through 5. You ready? What shall we say then, that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Correct? Amen. He believed God, Amen. and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's what we need. Brothers. We need to believe God, and it will be counted unto us for righteousness. And you know what? When we believe God, the word takes on a power of its own. You see? It's not me chasing after something. Once I believe the word, the word is instilled in me and it goeth forth. You follow me? It's not me going after chasing something. The word is brought in and believed and the word causes the action. Amen. It's the word that makes the vehicle run. Amen. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. Very simple message, brothers and sisters. His faith is counted for righteousness. Why? Because he believeth the word of God. That's what we need to do. Open our hymnals to 215. And we'll sing a wonderful song. This may be a new song to many of us, but it has beautiful words. <laughs>
well, folks, Amen. you know, Christ coming in the clouds of glory, us believing what he has to tell us, even if it's something that we don't want to hear, we need to be in agreement with God. Because if we're in agreement with God, then we can solve the problems that we have. Every, every answer that we need is found in the Word of God. Hallelujah. For any problem that ever arises in this world, Praise we can be transformed this day if we will simply believe what He has to say. Amen. Let us hang on to it like we wanted more than the very bread that we eat at the table. In Jesus' precious name, Lord God in heaven, we want to thank you so much for your word. We want to thank you that your word is living, that your word is sharp than any two-edged sword dividing to the very soul. We need you so much. I pray that you would give us this desire, this desire for your word, like that we know nothing, that we want to come to it as it's brand spanking new, like we've never heard it before. Let it fall onto our ears in such a way that it comes into us in brand new, brand new ways so that we can have brand new feelings, brand new motives, brand new desires to serve you. Let us praise you day and night, even when things are tough. People are stressed all over this world. So much stuff is going wrong. So many people are dying and sick, and things are just crazy here. Bombs are going off in people's minds. Lord, bring us the peace that comes, that passeth understanding because we know you, because we love you, because we listen to you. Grant us eyes to see and ears to hear this day and forevermore that we may be the people that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.